suddenly the vision of his devotional service returns. And after hanging the Shyamantaka jewel, he sees himself hanging a golden sash around Swamini's waist with tassels on both ends. Ayi Krishodari, slender girl, when will I, very fearfully, hang this string around your waist? Afraid that your waist will break. I will hang this string around it just to bind it up. Seeing how thin Shimati's waist is, Tulasi is afraid that it will break. The Mahajans sing. Her waist is more thin than that of a lion. And it can be held even with a fist. We One can... can mm. Before... Yes. We continue, we can just stay a little bit here and repeat importance of Raghunathas, Tulsis, deep absorption in serving Shimati Radhika. It's so deep and in detail that he's taking care about all, all, all details of Seva, all details which, which are beneficial for Shri Radharani, for her welfare. And his fear is also quite normal in his Taiba. We said that this fear nourish his love for Radhika even more. Mm. And this fear is so present in his heart because he is very cautious, attentive to do perfectly her seva, his seva or her seva. This attentiveness we should learn from perfect devotees. We all heard so many times that we should learn how to think like a manjaris. We should learn how to feel like a manjaris. We should learn how to serve like a manjaris. So here is opportunity for us sadakas. And we have, in these words of Raghunatha, we have opportunity to feel his fear out of love. He is not fear for himself. All his existence is to give the pleasure to Shimati Radhika. So it's completely normal the devotee feels fear and be afraid what will help happen with my beloved. If she is running too fast, maybe the slender waist will break. It is not possible, but the fear always put in some kind of illusion, isn't it? In material life, when we feel strong fear, 
Fear cover our intelligence. And we don't have a proper perception. But this kind of fear is transcendental fear, full of love, pure love. And this kind of fear nourishing relationship between Tulsi and Swamini. So we can see here that how fear is actually actually is secondary rasa. And help to intensify primary rasa. And my primary rasa, Raghunati Seg, is Staiba that I am Radhika's maid servant. This is my Madhurya sweet relationship with her. Because sometimes jokes are coming. They are also not ordinary jokes. They are helping primary rasa to be more, more, more intensified, like a fear. You see? Joke and fear. Also, in transcendental level, in transcendental love, they are just making condensed and more condensed, more condensed primary rasa. My stai bhava and my established relationship. And we have opportunity to listen about the lives of those who are already on that stage and they can give us inspiration as much as we can open our heart and be able to receive their valuable gifts. So I just wanted to underline somehow this mood of Raguna. Because when we enter the properly in the proper mood of Raguna, then we can continue in the proper mood to listen other parts of commentaries, lilas, and so on and so on, which are in close connection with these words. One can never serve God with love unless one knows the desires on his mind. We must get some impulse from him, therefore. On the strength of his loving devotion, the curtain of God's mind will open for the devotee and he can see what is the Lord's desire. How glorious then are the kinkaris who are dedicated to the service of the full Madhana Mahabhav, Supreme Love personified, Srimati Radhika, who keeps even Krishna under her control. Radhe. So there is one important word here, curtain. Two kinds of curtain are materialistic curtain and curtain full of love. So to see 
Transcendent reality, conditioned soul, needs to be free from this curtain of material consciousness. And to remove this curtain from the heart, not only from the eyes. When curtain is removed from the heart, then is removed automatically from the eyes, ears, and all senses. But removed from the heart of conditioned soul. Then, by the mercy of Acharyas, who removed this, devotee can see little by little, drop by drop, deep desires in the heart of Ishtadeva. Until this <clears throat> curtain is not removed, how we will know what my beloved Radhika wants? And if I don't know what she wants, how I will serve her? So I need the shelter of those who doesn't have a curtain in their heart like me. I need the shelter and association of those personalities for whom Radhika removed her own curtain that she, they can see her desires. I hope it's not too complicated. I need their help because Radhika is so close with them, so pleased with them, that she agreed. She has to agree to remove her own curtain from her own heart. And it doesn't go by force. You have to give me. No. It goes only by love. Pure, selfish, unmotivated love. And I need, like a teeny, so I need their mercy. Because through their mercy, they will remove the curtain of Maya from my heart and my consciousness, all my senses. And when I feel their feelings for Shimati Radhika, then I will be properly connected and in proper relationship mood of closeness. They have to open their hearts to devotees, and in their hearts there is only radical existing. They don't have anything else. When they open their heart, I will know their desire, my Guru Dev's desire, and by knowing my Guru Dev's deep desire, maybe. By his mercy, I will understand the drops of radical desire. And slowly but surely, it will make me stay. And all bhavas which are existing will come together in this stay and bring devotee rasa. Rasa of what? Of Seva. Loving devotion. Loving devotion. Loving devotion. Yeah. Many bhavas has to come together in one primary bhava, stai, fixed bhava. And then rasa of devotional service becomes condensed and more condensed than one.
And it, what does it practically mean? It means that I will start, devotee will start to understand the feelings of Guru Manjari, Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, be connected with their feelings, they will start to feel the feelings of Srimad And this is the importance of Guru Parampara. Transition of emotion, which are starting from Radhika and is descend, descend in Parampara lineage. And like Guru Dev is saying, then this is my rightful claim. <laughs> this is my heritage. Not because I earn it, because I receive it. I'm speaking this because I'm meditating on this, how to adjust my own consciousness on their feelings, because I have a faith that through their feelings, I will start at least to be feel what really Radhika wants. Mm. Not directly to her. Me and Radhe. No, doesn't work like this. Sorry, I cannot see. Oh, Sumatiji is here. Just jump whenever you want. Whenever you want, please. Help your poor brother and others who feels something to say. I think you're very rich. I want to learn from you. <laughs> My bank, bank account is empty. <laughs> Sorry. Zero. Minus. Krishna himself. Worships Prema, divine love. Therefore, he is also subdued by Sri Radhika's maidservants. That is their full pride and glory. Even Krishna is subdued with Radhika's maidservant because she, he is subdued by their Swami. And the close relationship is between Swamini and Kinkari is, is so intense, so pure, so loyal that Krishna completely free of any hesitation, any hesitation, is surrendering to these small girls. And this is the glory of Manjari Bhav. And this is their pride. Why this is their pride? Not own pride. Pride, their proudness are lying on the proudness of Swamini. Their proud. Their sweet, charming, enchanting Swami. Because she is enchanting this guy, who is enchanting all three worlds, like Acharyas are saying. And who is surrendering to them, the small girl. Oh, this is the problem and glory. And there is no more glorious position. Baba will guide us now how it is possible. Isn't it? Yeah. 
Krishna became Gora to taste the love that Radhika feels for him. And after he had experienced that, he also wanted to taste the nectar of the kinkari's service. So we should again just say something short about this. Many times we were talking about this. But when we speak about divine loving couple Radha and Mohan, we are talking about the most pure, purest love which exists even in spiritual. In their loving, amorous pastimes are something which is most beautiful and most sweet. So Krishna, with his own desire, this is the function of desire, with his own desire, he wants to relish Radhika's emotion. You see, with his own independent mood, he is using his independent mood to relish love. Mm. This is the value of independence. When we put our independence focused in pure love, then is the proper use of free will and independence. Because without free will and independence, Love is not possible. You cannot force someone to love you. You cannot put the gun wow. in front of him and say, just love me. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I will kill you. <laughs> no, yes, yes, I love you. I love you very much. You know. No, this is not love. Because it's forceful. Love has to be voluntary. Love has to be the sign of my free will that I want to love you and surrender to this love. So Krishna is saying, okay, I want to relish Radhika's love. And he became a guru. But because he became Radharani, in the Gora mood, he became Radharani, one quality of Radhika appears in his heart. I cannot hold it for myself. Compassion appears. Before that, he was compassion. Yeah, it's okay. Like a god, he is naturally compassion. But to give this specific position to other jivas, how to serve the love, he cannot do it without Radhika's mercy. And when he became Radhika in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Audarya appears in his heart. Natural. Compassion appears in his heart and he very openly, graciously said, but I want to relish King Karibala. What does it mean to be servants of my beloved? And then I want to give to all others. Many times we've heard this, but it's always nice to repeat that we understand clearly in which kind of age we are living and which kind of opportunity we receive. Because it's not that in each Kali Yuga this kind of opportunity will appear. So this is the great mercy of Gauranga and Gora Bhakta Vrinda. Because Krishna took a shelter of 
Radha Dasi. He took a shelter of Manjari Bhagavans. And he, when he relished and relished like a Gora, relish, relish, relish in Jaganapuri, he says, okay, I will give to everyone. Doesn't consider who is qualified or no, because for this kind of love, no one is qualified because even I am in qual unqualified. And I received Radha Kripa to become thinker. So this is this kind of acharyas are explaining to us this kind of Krishna's mentality. Why he became Buddha. And how it's sweet to meditate on these Gora pastimes and his inner reasons of appearance. Because through these Gora Lilas, Raj Lila will open. And through diving deep in Raj Lila, in the proper mood which Gora established, like Manjari, Radha Dasi, devotee understand even more deeply Gora. So it goes simultaneously, merging in each other. And this is Bhajan. The awareness of this is also Bhajan. We can practice this kind of Bhajan even in a bus. Even in a train, even in a job, to understand what Gora, Gora really gave to all of us, even to me. While he relished the mood of the manjaris, the Lord's body became formed like a turtle. Kurmakrti. Or sometimes his limbs would loosen and stretch out. Ashti Sandhi Vyoga. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita describes Mahaprabhu's mad words after he came out of his Kurmakriti. Today I went to Govardhan Hill, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, to see if Krishna was tending his cows there. Climbing on Govardhan Hill, Krishna played his flute, surrounded by the cows. Hearing the flute song, Shimati Radha came there. Oh, Saki, I cannot describe her form and mood. Krishna took Radha by the hand and entered a cave with her. While the Sakis told me to pick some flowers, For the service of Sri Sri Radha Mohan, the Sakis are asking the Kinkaris to pick flowers. Here, it is clear that Mahaprabhu finally came to relish the mood of the spiritual maidservants, Manjaris, in the pinnacle of his ecstatic absorption.
Again, please, this sentence, last one which you read, please, Kishore. Here, it is clear that Mahaprabhu finally came to relish the mood of the spiritual maidservants, Manjaris, in the pinnacle of his ecstatic absorption. What is the pinnacle of Goranga's absorption? That he finally, finally came to relish a manjari bhav. Ultimate, unatoyo. This is the pinnacle of all meditations. This is the pinnacle essence. which Mahaprabhu finally, what, why finally? Because first he was relishing Radha Bhava, but finally, when he was completely drunk out of Radha Bhava, because he entered in the heart of Radharani, plundered this treasure of her heart, Finally, he said, now something more is to be relished. How to become her maidservant. And this is the pinnacle essence of his ecstatic absorption. And this is the great secret which has to be relished with the heart. All this lila which is this described here in Chaitanya Charitamrita is from the angle of Manjari. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entered in the mood of Manjari and then he saw all this scene how it's going on. He was in deep meditation. And when we say in deep meditation, he was not meditating. I am Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is meditating on Govardhan. No. This is Rastabhas. He was in meditation first that he was Manjari, who is going on Gordon Hill to see Gopi Janavala. And then suddenly he saw this beautiful sweet girl, Shimatarika. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with his own example showed how to meditate, not from bodily consciousness. <laughs> But first, to be fixed in your own Stai Bhava and from own Stai Bhava, meditate on Lila as much as we can. So, first, he came in the mood of Manjari, accepted this Avesh of Manjari, and then he started to meditate. And what is the result of this meditation? He became mad. And the symptoms of this madness appeared outside, externally on his body, and he became a like a turtle. And can you imagine, when he became a turtle, he cannot speak normally, you know. <laughs> when he came out from this condition, he continued and tried to describe associates what was happening in his life. And his words are the words of mad person. All 
or we can say intoxicated. Very intimate pastimes are going on in Gordon, in the caves of Gordon. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw himself present there in Manjari form. And Sakshi asked him, okay, girl, pick up some flowers. Yeah? They didn't see him like a go, Ranga, Sanyas, Krishna, Supreme Personality of Godhead. She's, he is not different from the Radha and Krishna. No. He came in this lila in his manjari form. And Saki is completely natural. Ask him, please pick some flowers. Be so kind. And he did it. <laughs> Very sweet for you. And when Mahaprabhu almost drowned of ecstasy in the ocean, and all the joints of his bones became disconnected out of this ecstasy, he told his devotees, in half external consciousness. Seeing the Yamuna River, I went to Vrindavan, where I saw the Prince of Braja, Krishna, playing in the water with Sri Radhika and the gopis, having great fun. I stayed on the shore with the other Sakis, while one Saki showed this pastime to the others. Here again, Mahu explains that he did not play an active role in Krishna's pastimes but that he was relishing a, per, a service position like that of the manjaris, witnessing these sweet pastimes without taking active part in them. Sunitiji, please. Help your poor brother. Can you enlighten us a little bit with your sharings about this specific subject? If you have something, something is coming to you. It looks like Suniti came into this very Deep absorption, drowned in ecstasy. Oh, okay. but you disappear now, no? Okay. Radhe, radhe. So, another lila, which is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. We can see how Chaitanya Charitamrita is full of jewels, rare jewels of Manjari Bhav, but hidden jewels. So many devotees were reading this. Uh, just a second, I have to pull my bat. So many devotees were reading, but they don't catch the point of Manjari Bhav. 
And we need the guidance of Rasik devotees who understand the deep meanings of appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So here again, we are coming in Goranga's madness when he relished Manjari Bhava. All he joins of his bones became disconnected. When he was meditating, that ocean is actually in Puri, is Yamuna in Vrindavan. And he saw this beautiful lila when the gopis are together with Shiradika and having fun. But he is staying at the shore. And Baba is giving perfect commentary. He didn't play active role. He didn't went in Yamuna. Like he never is going, he never going in Radha Kunda during the pastimes between Radhika, Mohan, and Gopis. He's witnessing, he's relishing their amorous pastimes by witnessing. This is a little bit contradictory and confusing for materialistic mind because we have to be in the middle of the soup. We have to be active that we relish something. But this is the limitation of body, mind, intelligent of this body. But through the spiritual body, it is possible to relish even more when you are witnessing something than when you are in active role. And this secret, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu opened, and this secret also Krishna wanted to relish, like a Goranga. Because he is the king of relishers, you know. And he is relishing this Manjari Bhava so expertly that he wants to be witness of loving pastimes. He found it that it's much more tasteful to be witness than to take active role. And what's happened? The proof of supremacy of this kind of relishing is that his bones <laughs> out of ecstasy probably saying became disconnected so again another madness is coming and he is trying to explain this, but the words are not sufficient. We should relish it. Words are never sufficient. Or metaphors, analogies, everything poetic is just the hints for Parakya Bhav. We should relish it. And one more thing. If you allowed me, because I see now here, Guranga explaining, I stayed on the shore with other Sakis. Who are these other Sakis on the shore? Radhe Radhe Manjaris. While, and now is the interesting thing. While one Saki showed this pastime to the others, what they are doing by looking at these pastimes, they are imitating what they are doing in Yamuna. And this is one of the meaning of Lila, to imitate like a drama, 
to imitate what you saw and now you repeat it with your loving close friends. I remember when I was very small boy, I like these Western films, you know, Indians, cowboys. And it was, you know, black and white in that time, a long time ago, you cannot imagine it. Black and white films, movies was. And after I saw each movie, I came at my home and all movie by myself to myself, I repeated whatever I remember. So this is natural for the kids. Relish. And we can to relish, because I wanted to prolong this relishing. Relish. Two hours of two hours or half hour, uh, one and a half hours of movie, it was not sufficient, you know. I was unsatiated. I wanted more and more. <laughs> I'm just giving this practical example from my life. You know. So these girls, young girls, are doing the same thing. In one way, they are looking in the lila, then they do the same time to even relish more and more and more. They are showing these pastimes to each other. So this is the beauty of transcendental pastimes, and this is the beauty of Kripa, which are allowing us, neophytes, beginners, sadakas, just to enter a little bit in the drops of that lila. <laughs> Radhe. Yeah, Radhe. <laughs> I imagine now how sweet it is when the little girls are imitating Radha and Krishna. Like also the dances in India, they are like this. Oh, nice. Chaitanya Charitamrita further says, Whatever he, he himself came to relish, since, as is shown above, he did relish Manjari Bhav, he was the one who taught it to the devotees also. Notably, through Srila Rupa and Srila Raghunathas Goswami. Gora Bhaktavringa, it means Gora Bhaktavringa. Rupa Raghunatha Pade Hoibel. So it means he relished first and he gave to others. who can relish also. And through them, through Goswamis, especially Rupa, Raghunatha, Sanatana, he spread to the second generation of devotees, third generation of devotees, fourth, so on, so on, so on, up to us, to all living entities. He spread it because he was so in charge with Radha, compassion. He couldn't, although this is Parakya above, it's hidden, he couldn't hold for himself. Because Radhika, it is Radhika's arrangement to open her door of heart to everyone wants to become 
cremator. To open the curtains. To open the curtains. Yeah, this is my desire. She opened the curtain, delivered this curtain to true her maid servants, not through Sakis. <laughs> because Manjari Baba cannot give the Sakis through her own Sakis. And we are here in the position of receivers of this beautiful Kripa. This is Radhika's merciful glance. Radha Kripa Kataksha. This is Radhika's through her maid servants. We are talking when she will see me, never. Her maid servant is distributing her glance to me. And when the glance of Radhika through my Gurudev change my heart. Then I will be able to see the glance of Radha Kripa Katash. Then I will receive Prashad. Radha Prashad. Yeah. One can never understand the flavors of braja while remaining in a mundane consciousness. And the devotees who take shelter of Sriman Mahaprabhu's lotus feet are the suitable candidates for relishing these flavors. In order to relish the sweetness of the love in Brajam, one must give up the attitude of awe and reverence towards God. Vrindavan is the kingdom of sweetness. And the Upasana, subject of worship and meditation of Braja Rasa, is a sweet Upasana, in which we want to see Krishna as the Laukika Satpandhu a good worldly friend. Yes. Before we continue, three points are here important. One can never understand Raja on the mundane consciousness. I am this body. I am this mind, I am this and that, and so on, and so on. Sadaka needs to move from this consciousness and to leave this consciousness, conditioned consciousness. He needs to accept his spiritual identity To understand, Baba is saying, one can never understand the flavors of Raja with gross material consciousness. Because understanding the flavors is me, it not doesn't mean only understanding. It's understanding plus feelings. Flavors cannot be understood. Flavors should be felt. And we feel something, we have realization, and then by through this realization we understand the better. 
if I taste this cookie, I taste the flavor of that cookie. Taste. Then I have better understanding what is really cooking. If I didn't taste the cookie, but I just know the recipe for cooking, for cookie, it's not perfect understanding. So understanding the flavor of Raja means to be completely pervaded with the Raja mood, especially in King Karibha. Then he is saying another point. In the order to relish the sweetness of love in Vraja, one must give up attitude of awe and reverence towards God. So it's not enough to live material consciousness. Devotee, who is not attached for material consciousness, should make another step. To remove this, to give up this attitude of awe and, relish, uh, awe and reverence to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As much devotee has this consciousness, very strong, established, condensed, he cannot taste all this sweetness of pure natural love in Vraja. And not only that, he cannot taste the variations of all these flavors. It's not just one flavor. It's all specter of different flavors which are mixing. And only devotees who are able to relish this can witness this. But they already gave up the mood, I am worshipper of the God, with full awe and reverence. And Baba is saying, first condition is to give up material <laughs> consciousness, I am body. Second is condition remove or give up your attitude of all reverence and then practice bhajan, upasana, meditation of Vraj Rasa. And he's saying, as we want to see Krishna like Lauki Kabad, good worldly friend, So it means, if we have a bodily consciousness, if we are still attached to the awe and reverence, we cannot see Krishna. We cannot see Radhara. Like the Laukika Pandha, worldly friend, worldly girlfriend, because natural love will be blocked with these different kinds of consciousness which are not present at all in Vrindavan. Krishna gave up this consciousness. He who is Supreme Personality of God, He gave up this consciousness, left it in Dvaraka and said, okay, let this Supreme Personality of God of me stay in Dvaraka, but I always live in Vrindavan like Dira Lalit, careless, free prince who is always enjoying. So in the same manner, devotees are worshipping Shimateratara. She is my beloved Swami. She is my sweet, most beautiful. I'm so proud of her. 
I'm her shadow. And in this kind of consciousness, there is no whiff of awe and reverence. Same thing. Because sometimes we say, okay, Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead on one level. I understand, and in Vrindavan, he left it. And the goal of life is to worship his love. Okay, I will switch on. On the love, supreme love. But deep in the heart, I know that he is also, she is also Svayam Bhagavati. She is supreme personality of goddess. And deep in my heart, although I am talking that I am Manjari, deep in my heart I have a feeling of awe and reverence because she is a goddess. I am talking there because this is important to understand that awe and reverence it doesn't only matter on Krishna. Is focused, but it depends on the consciousness and the feelings in the heart of the devotee. How his attitude will be towards Swami. Because with this attitude, we cannot enter in Vrindavan and what to say to enter in Nikunja. So Baba is very expertly. If you, if uh, I like this commentary so much because they are so perfectly and expertly not only written, they are, they have every sentence and every paragraph has his own meaning. Why it's here and not there, and in that way, this commentary is raising up our consciousness in proper direction. And this is Guru, Vichar. <laughs> this is Guru. All Gurus. Bringing the Lilas, bringing the Bhavas, and warnings. Lilas, Bhavas, angle of following, the pro proper following, and warnings. So this is Sadaka life. Of course, Shimati Radhika's waist will not break so soon. But out of great, unadulterated love for her, for her Swamini, Tulasi is afraid that it will. What does love seek? Only the happiness of its object. Only the lovers can make the beloved happy. The lovers think, may you be happy. Or as written in Chaitanya Chaitamrita, the love of the devotees of Braja is, a pure, is as pure as molten gold. And there's not even a whiff of personal happiness there in the hearts of these devotees. Sunitiji, please, a bit straw in my mouth, I'm begging you if you can say something. 
You're sick or what? No, I'm just relaxing. I'm listening. Ah, Taking okay. it easy <laughs> on my couch. No, I, oh, I see. No, the I, I just, yeah. you know, no, it's just like, yeah, so. it's windy out. I was in the garden and then I came back. Oh, so okay. I think that, yeah, that point what you make is always important. And I was thinking how to become, a, you know, like a friendly relationship with Radha and Mohan. How is it possible to be authentic, that we are the Dasis, we are the servants, and we are aware that they are the supreme, but at the same time, I am not afraid of them anymore. You know, I'm not afraid that I do anything wrong. Maybe I am sometimes, but in general, it is not my mood that I, you know... I always, I am afraid of them or I'm afraid I could do something wrong. But at the same time, I want to be also respectful and very conscious. I thought this is a very interesting point, how to practice this. And of course, I practice this with my, my, my brothers and sisters and also with my Gurudev. I try to, you know, be natural in my behavior. I try to be relaxed, like in the family. When we are in our family circle, friend circle, then no need to be pretending, you know, like, yeah, I look a little bit sloppy today, so what? <laughs> I don't need to, you know, on the human platform. Of course, the Mandarins, they are always looking their best. Because they are expert in dressing, they are expert in decoration, and they are expert in uh, makeup. And sometimes maybe they don't even need makeup because they are the makeup. You know, I was thinking uh, when you were exp uh, explaining how Swamini's waist belt and her waist are the same, no? Because her love is so, you know, she is love personified. So everything that comes in touch with her is like her. It's not like in our case, I have to make my hair nicely. I have to make everything nicely so that I can look good in the Zoom or whatever. But for Swamini, she always looks, you know, her best. <laughs> and she doesn't really care because she is only mad in love with her Mohan. But the Manjaris, they are so sweet. And also, although they are Darcy's, they are in this friendly mood. They want to make her look good. They say, don't run now, Swamini. We have to first fix you. We want to make you look the best. Be a little bit patient. Let us uh, put on your dress, your petticoat, your earrings, your... Whatever you, you put, no, what we what we can put on the how how can we make perfect love look more beautiful? It's not possible because in any circumstances, even when she is lying in her bed in the kunsch and they wake up in the morning and the hair are standing, you know, like like uh, you know how how do you say how they say how does Baba say this? It's standing, uh, uh, you know. Uh, from her head, and it looks like a cloud, a black cloud, he says. No? But even that is so ecstatic that uh, it's unexpected and and it's uh, undescribable. And I always feel with my limited um, mind, it's very difficult to, to grasp it. But I can only feel that I am very attracted to that natural uh, attraction of between Swamini and her Darcy's. And it's difficult to experience it uh, when we are trained like the, like the priest or the priestess or like the preacher or like the, like any kind of covering that has been in my consciousness or still is. So I'm very thankful to Gurudev that he is taking away all these coverings. And I just pray every day that this will slowly, slowly go.
so that I can have a natural relationship with my, you know, Swamini, with my brothers and sisters and and with my Gurudev. And I want to be a natural person in my, ho my own life as much as possible as a human. And I would like to develop the natural behavior towards Swamini. And of course, through Swamini, I will know how to behave with Mohan also. And I learned it from Gurudev. And um, I think we have a temple life. But sometimes I think, you know, for myself, now I share something uh, private, but I, I invite all the devotees to also share on that. Because I think now they are in the temple, but they are not in the temple. You know, it's a natural, it's a natural um, exchange when we are together in our spiritual senses, in our spiritual world, then it's a natural exchange. And that's why, why Gurudev also says, you speak to her, speak to Swamini, speak to me also, you know, and Sometimes I want to see Gurudev on the screen and I'm greedy to see him. But then he says, I'm always with you. <laughs> Come to that level. Come to that natural love. And, um, you know, don't, don't be disrespectful, but be natural. Be relaxed. <laughs> and I like that. So today I was relaxed because I thought I will just listen what Goranga Sundara has to share. And I want to be, you know, not in the center of the Zoom or something. But now you call me in your sweet way. What can I do? <laughs> but I admit I am just relaxed and I love to listen to you and to your feelings. And... uh Yeah, when it comes to this friendly relationship, then I always feel to find the right balance, you know, with me. I want to be friendly. I want to be natural. I want to be, but I also don't want to neglect. You no, know, sometimes I, I think I'm more neglectful because maybe I don't change the dress of my Takoji every day. Then I think, my God, Suniti, you are such a sloppy person. How can you let them there in your clo in their clothes? No, you know. But I am. I try to do my best what I can do. No, because I am just where I am. But I know there's many many devotees here who are more uh, natural with their takojis than me, and you know it's. I think we are all in the process of learning. I want to learn from you. Please also other devotees share how you try to understand this, how to be natural in your relationship, but at the same time, not to be sloppy, you know, not to be neglectful, not to be lazy or crazy. It's, it's maybe something that it has to, you know, develop. It has to come. That is my question to all of you. I am just being relaxed today. Sorry. <laughs> Ready. So you heard our Didi? Is there someone who wants to share something? but in a natural feeling way <laughs> between friends. Now, to be friend with someone, it means that we are fixed in Baba. <laughs> Even in material, material platform. Why we are relaxed with the friends? Because we are fixed in our Baba and their Babas. We feel closeness in the same Baba. And I can be foolish, I can be this and that, open heart, because I feel very welcomed and warm, very embraced in this association. The same thing is to be fixed in Manjari Baba means to be close with those who are already fixed with Manjari Baba. And then, oh, and reverence naturally, 
automatically disappears. It doesn't have to force myself. Now, mm. I have to see real Vrindavan, real Radharani, like a teenage girl, not the goddess of my heart or something like that. No. Stai Bhava is the essence which brings naturality in our life. Why the married couples, some married couples have a good relationship, good prosperity? Because they are natural, situated, and completely dedicated because of love to each other. And they quarrel. They are afraid to each other. But they are natural in their relationship. Relationship is the essence. But if someone doesn't want this kind of relationship, then the misunderstandings are going on. Is Gauravani here in Bratshuddari? I don't hear him. I don't no. see him. Sorry. So, here, Bratshundari and Goravani. Oh. But maybe they are traveling. Oh. Because I know they also have a sweet relationship with their Takujis. And I think it's also that natural, natural friendship or natural Dasi Bhav with a, you know, friend tune. Ah, there he is, Gauravani. You want to share on some natural, natural love <laughs> and your how you how you do it with your with your swamini radhe radhe i also was trying to hide today a little bit more uh to hear to listen you have the same bath huh? <laughs> But now, out of love, I think it's most important that when we want to do something out of feelings, then we have to have a relationship based on a natural way. If we are too much in respect, that means fear. If we act in fear, we will be remembered to material relationships because usually they are based on fear. Because material means I want something and I have fear that I don't get it. <laughs> so if I don't want anything and I I, I just want to to exchange naturally, like when I go and see Suniti, I'm not going there to get something. I mean, except some uh, realizations maybe she's sharing with me. Then, of course, I want them, but it's not that I'm going there to get something. So also with Takuchi, uh, if we don't want anything, then this relationship actually becomes very natural. But natural means, uh, you know, every one of us is growing up in, in a special way. So natural means c completely different things. Because like like we were growing up, we think this is, this is natural. But is it really natural? <laughs> we have these patterns, family patterns, patterns in uh, relationships, patterns in thinking, patterns in handling things. And of course, these patterns, they may appear very natural, but are they really natural?
So I think it's not so easy to find actually the base of natural. I don't know if you can follow this these thoughts, but I thought for many years that I'm behaving very natural, but now more and more I see that actually I'm not so natural. I I, I have to I have to learn to be natural. Natural in the way of spiritual natural, because the soul has his own nature. So if we talk about natural, it depends. Is it natural in the way on the base we were growing up in this body, or is it natural in the way that this nature was there before on the platform of the soul? And this nature of the soul is always lovely. This nature of the soul is not thinking about someone, something, you know. Oh, you know, this person is like this and that, or I don't want to have any relationship with this or that, or that's not natural. Because the nature of the soul is to love, like Radharani, everyone. That's the nature of love, and this is the nature of us. So how to live that, actually? And I think this is a very interesting point made by Suniti, how we can actually bring this into our life. So what we do, we just play a game of love. Like, like Goranga Sundara said, when he was watching these black and white movies, and then he was actually playing this game again. And, yeah, enjoying that, actually. So by playing this game, I think it's actually the natural way to, to come back to the real nature, the nature of the soul. So we have to actually do this bhajan, go in this, play this, and then see actually how is the natural way to exchange love. I think, therefore, we are making bhajan, that we come out of our material, natural, into spiritual, natural. But first of all, we have to be like we are, isn't it? I mean, like we are now, the whole package. And offer this to our Swamini. I'm not proud that I'm like I am. I am what I am. But I just want to give everything what I am, all my faults, to you, because I don't have to give anything else. What can, what can I give you? I don't have anything. I'm not intelligent. I'm not very special, specific. I'm just here, I, I am what I am, and I don't, I don't even really understand what I am. But I want to give it to you, so please, you make something out of me. And I think this is very natural, because this starts from where we are, and it's not pretending anything. I don't have to be very learned, I don't have to be wise, I don't have to be very whatever. Here I am, I give what I have, 
it's just a game i have nothing to lose because in this game i can only win more love more natural love so this is just what i thought in this moment so i hope it can thank you very thank you very much <laughs> Is there someone more who wants to share something? Otherwise, I will ask Kishoreji. If there's someone more, Mahababa, I see you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm actually hesitating. Should I say something? Should I not? <laughs> but now you called me. <laughs> uh, actually, but I saw you. <laughs> Actually, first of all, I would like to thank all of you for this beautiful topic and also for to Suniti to, for bringing up this topic uh, because uh, this is something that really um, encourages me uh, because uh, how to say, I don't know, uh, you know, we, we are often, at least in my case, uh, prone to beat ourselves up you know with guilt like oh i'm not good enough i should be doing this i should be doing this and um constantly in this uh, internal battle and we also of course we have our ups and downs in life our struggles but uh somehow i have a feeling that they are here our takurjis are here through good and bad through everything in our lives and <clears throat> and this is something that that gives me this permanent strength and and hope and and uh, energy just to know that they are here 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 they are now temporarily on my windowsill <laughs> and uh so they are wrapped up like this so this is how i feel like being natural you know for me it's like if i feel cold during the night then i think oh they must be feeling also cold then i will wrap them up you know that because it's cold if i feel hungry then oh maybe they are also hungry and what is interesting last night it was so amazing as soon as i wrapped them in the blanket i didn't cover myself and i stopped feeling cold so that was amazing is this my feeling of cold or maybe it's them giving me the the feeling how they feel you know we don't know we think sometimes it's us feeling something but maybe it's them giving us the message through feeling and this is how Manjari feels naturally. I'm not saying that I'm feeling like that. This is like just a maybe some some accidental realization. But isn't it that how we are supposed to feel that we just happen to feel something and we do it naturally? And then, hey, this is what Radhika actually wanted, you know? Or maybe we have some inclinations. We have some talents. And we want to do, we, we get inspired. This is the intuition and inspiration that is very important in this process. Inspiration and intuition, follow your feelings. And if you have some feeling to, you want to make something nice for them, or maybe just do some simple thing, or you are just have, have a feeling to do certain things. And then you do it, and then you realize, hey, this is actually them guiding us. This is our, um, we, we feel the guidance. And, and that's, that's so amazing when through these little everyday things, you discover these connections and that's how your relationship actually strengthens. Because these little everyday connections these everyday realizations they actually give us fuel in our spiritual life um, but you know <laughs> i'm like everyone else i'm not feeling perfect every day <laughs> and have my troubles and mental uh 
speculations and all sorts of things going on, but they are really being tolerant with me. So, so this is how I feel being natural. <laughs> and I told them, hey, you know, I'm not a pujari. I used to be a pujari. I used to do all these mantras, mudras, uh, yagi. Uh, I didn't do yagyas, luckily, uh, but <laughs> I was doing everything else. And at one point, when Giri Raj with Radeshyam, Govardhan, Sheila's, they came, they just um, kicked out all these uh, rules, rituals, and everything. I, suddenly, I started feeling like I hate ritual, rituals. And I was thinking, is, I, is it something wrong with me? But then I realized and I heard someone told me, you know why you feel like sick of rituals? Because Govardhan, Sheila's, they hate rituals also. They all, only want sweet love and natural reciprocation. And then something clicked. Hey, you should more follow your inner feelings. So that's it. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just babbling here. Thank you very but, much. But uh, that was my sharing. Radha, Radha. Radha, Radha. Thank you very much. Kishoriji, I would like, because it, it's coming 3 o'clock, it, it will be naturally to stop so that we can be absorbed in all these words. What the what yes. is for sharing and Baba. So uh, my, I will suggest just one thing. If you can repeat this small paragraph, because it's explained what does it mean natural love. Mm. Yes. Spirit, from the spiritual perspective also, which can help us. And maybe we can finish here and continue the next Saturday. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Why not? So... Of course, Srimati Radhika's waist will not break so soon. But out of great, unadulterated love for her Swamini, Tulasi is afraid that it will. What does love seek? Only the happiness of its object. That is the point. What is the pure love seeks? Pure love is always natural. It doesn't have to be forced to be, like my brothers and sisters said. It doesn't have to be forced. Because love always something seeks, is active. It's not void. Please continue. The love of the devotees of Braja is as pure as molten gold, and there's not even a whiff of personal happiness there in the hearts of these devotees. So it will be continued next Saturday. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry for my sharings, yes, my I... mistakes. But I feel comfortable in your association. <laughs> I can make mistakes. <laughs> Thank you for so much inspiration and opening Thank the you. curtain of your heart that we can also understand what is written behind, uh, between the lines. Rante, Rante. Thank you very much. Voila, Kishoriji. <laughs> Thank you, Kishoriji. <laughs> and all my greetings and embraces to the company, sweet company in, in Tyrol, which you are now. Sai Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe.